The facelifted Volkswagen Polo has landed in Australia and one of the big headlines is that it's a lot more expensive than this car was when it launched back in 2018 where you get one for drive away of just over $20,000 but we'll be discussing that more in depth further on in this video because today we're checking out the GTI, the flagship of the range, a rival for vehicles like the Hyundai i20N and the Ford Fiesta ST, a sporty little hot hatch which as I'll get to in the driving impressions captures a little bit of the Mark V Golf GTI's magic in a smaller package but before we get to that I'd love to hear your thoughts on the facelifted Polo GTI in the comment section down below and if you haven't done so already we'd also love it if you could hit subscribe to Chasing Cars. So let's talk about how the facelifted Polo is situated in the Australian market because it is quite a lot more expensive than before. It now costs over $25,500 to get into a base model 70 TSI manual and this GTI variant is up nearly six grand, $5,860 to be exact, to $38,750. But not without good reason because there is a fair bit more standard on the Polo now than there ever was, including on this GTI at least, these fantastic high quality Matrix LED headlights that you can just leave on all the time and you can leave the high beams on I should say and it blinds out for other cars coming the other way. Really nice little safety feature which feeds into more safety features that I'll get into in a minute. You've also got a new look for the Polo. It's quite subtle, the facelift doesn't kind of ruin the looks of this car. I actually think it looks really rather good from the front end. This new LED light bar that runs full width, of course you can tell this is the GTI, bunch of GTI badging and little red accents and all of the Polos now get new alloy wheels and the GTI is also equipped only with 18 inch alloy wheels not the 17s that you could get before we'll feel how that is when we take it out for a drive but yeah on the whole i think this facelift is actually a rare successful one but please let me know your thoughts down below and now let's talk about the boot at the back of the polo gti i will also mention that this new paint color for 2022 is called king's red metallic the same as found on the mark 8 golf gti and it's actually slightly discounted from before. It's only $300 on top of this car and all the other colors are no cost options where before premium metallic paintwork was $600. So one of the areas that the Polo is actually slightly better value even though it's more expensive potentially, although that is a fairly bold claim to make. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. It is a nice color though. It changes in, in different lights, looks orange sometimes and a beautiful red others. I quite like it, but let me know your thoughts. One thing that hasn't changed though is the Polo's practicality. 351 litres of load space is really competitive for this class. It's right up there with some small SUVs and even close to this car's bigger brother, the Golf, which gets 381 litres. So it's only 30 litres down. You also get a space saver spare tyre under the boot floor. Of course, the seats fold in a 60-40 split and it's just really nicely finished mostly back there. It feels of a high quality and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we jump in the front seat. There is a familiar VW quality to the interior of the Polo GTI, but I guess that comes as no surprise. And the GTI itself adds a really nice flavor. There's plenty of red stitching and some callbacks to this vehicle's heritage, including the lovely tartan upholstery on these sporty seats that are very supportive. Even though it is just cloth upholstery, it's nice actually, really comfortable and stays cool in summer better than leather. So I actually give this a vote of approval. Both seats also get height adjustment, including for the passenger and manual lumbar adjustment. There's no electronic adjustment in here, but the fact that the backrest is infinitely adjustable on a scroll wheel and the fact that you have that manually adjustable lumbar means it's super easy to adopt a good driving position in this Polo. It's not quite as low and sporting and figure hugging as an i20N's driving position, but it's still really good and actually gives you a better view out over the dashboard, which is appointed in soft touch material as a bit of a hallmark for the Polo. The material quality is generally very high, including this lovely steering wheel, perforated where you hold it and lovely soft leather on the top and the bottom. Red stitching, of course, little red inserts here. Leather appointed handbrake as well. Nice little touch and leather appointed shift knob. They haven't moved to the stubby nub style shifter of the Golf in this Polo. And I actually quite like that. It gives you an extra position to shift from if you wanna use the manual transmission because you do have paddles on the back of the wheel or you can use the stick if you like. And that just feels a little bit closer to being a manual gearbox because of course the Polo isn't available with a manual here in Australia. And I should also add that in Australia, we still only get the six speed DSG. European facelifted Polo GTIs have moved to a seven speed item, but this six speed item that's been developed 
quite heavily of course since the original Mark V GTI and the Mark V Golf R32 is still kicking around here and as I'll talk about in the driving impressions I actually think that's quite a good thing. Now onto the technology package which is really impressive in the Polo for this class. You can pay an extra $1,500 to get the sound and vision package which this car has equipped with it and it's the same with all the vehicles we've tested here today. They've all got the full kit and caboodle if you like so this car's about $40,500 before on-road costs which isn't cheap but this 9.2 inch touchscreen is really responsive. I find it to be much better than the Golf's new tacked on screen. It feels like the software works a little bit better with the things that are going on on there and the touchscreen is just a little bit more responsive. You also get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mirroring in this vehicle, not something that all competitors offer. For example, the Hyundai i20n still requires you to plug in via a cable. You get a lovely 10 and a quarter inch digital dashboard here which can show a full map that's fantastic, really nice and crisp, and it's got customizable different graphics to show. You interface with these haptic touch buttons, which uh, I'm starting to get my head wrapped around, though they do get kind of hot in usage. You can feel the steering wheel getting a little bit warm, which is kind of slightly unpleasant, but that's really the only bad part of the steering wheel, because as I mentioned before, so lovely to hold. Yes, there are some materials in here that are scratchy and hard. Up on the doors isn't particularly comfortable, and the armrests on the doors aren't that well padded, but you do have flock lining in this center bin here which feels really expensive nice to have that little extra touch and you have a sliding forwards and backwards armrest which is great and on the whole the quality in here the ease of interaction with things like the HVAC controls which are still separated from the touchscreen means that this Polo GTI is actually a lot easier to interface with than the new Mark 8 Golf GTI, at least in my opinion, because it just feels that little bit more familiar. They're not trying to push boundaries in here. It all just works, falls easily to hand. And although the quality of construction is really good, yes, there are some hard and scratchy plastics, but for a vehicle of this size and of this class, it actually feels very sophisticated in here. Add to that the six speaker, 300 watts beat stereo as part of that sound and vision package, and the fact that you can option this car with a sunroof means that I think for a lot of people who are going to be daily driving their hot hatches more than they are going to be taking them to the racetrack, this Polo GTI is still a worthy competitor even with the updated Ford Fiesta ST on its way and with the Hyundai i20n already settling into the Australian sales charts. So yeah, definitely have a look at one of these if you want to drive your car to work every day. In the back of this MQB A0 based Volkswagen Polo GTI and yes it's pretty tight back here. In fact it is a little bit tighter than the Hyundai i20n that I keep mentioning. These seats though are nice and soft and my legs are fairly comfortable sitting behind my driving position. It's not something you would have been able to say about a Polo from two generations ago so yeah it's good to see that Volkswagen's Polo is now kind of just about usable for four people. The middle seat's definitely a perch and there's a transmission tunnel for the not transmission that's not back there so you know it's it's usable if you need to for four people hopefully when we get this car back to chasing cars hq we'll have a bit more time to test out the baby seats back here to see if this would be usable as a family vehicle for a real family but for now we'll just have to wait and see what it's like back here you do have some real nice touches including these pair of USB-C charging ports which complement the pair up front bringing it to four in total of fast charging potential that's really great to see Volkswagen moving in the direction of the future this nice tartan upholstery continues back here the door plastics are very hard and scratchy though there is a little door bin if you need to carry a water bottle but there aren't that many smarts going on back here including the fact that it doesn't have a fold down armrest Apparently that's due to Australia's unique need for a top tether point in the middle seat and that's why Volkswagen doesn't include them on the Polo or any of its MQB A0 based vehicles including that Skoda Kamiq I had a look at a little while ago. So there's a little bit of background information and yeah the Polo's back seat is usable if not hugely spacious. The Polo GTI may run a larger engine than its key rivals, but its fuel consumption figures are still really impressive. 6.5 litres per 100 is the combined figure here in Australia, and in our road driving period we saw 6.8 litres per 100 k's after a little bit of a thrash and a cruise on the highway and through the city, which I reckon is pretty impressive. As for servicing, Volkswagen recommends you visit a dealer every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres at a cost of $2,750 over five years or 75,000 kilometres if you choose to opt for the care plan of five years. As for insurance, the median budget direct customer paid $825 to comprehensively insure their new Volkswagen Polo over the last 12 months. Now your premium may vary based on things that insurers take into account, such as your age, where you live, your driving history, and whether or not you garage the car. 
We're out here at the launch of the facelifted Polo GTI and I am driving around a racetrack at the moment but I'm not going very quickly. The launch took in some really testing roads around New South Wales just outside of Sydney uh, that were wet, very wet indeed, which actually showed this car to a really interesting and high standpoint really. It was very impressive in some of the worst conditions I've driven in for a little while. And then we've come out here to a racetrack to sort of experience this vehicle's performance a little bit closer to the limits of grip, though we haven't spent hours rousing the Polo GTI around track. A couple of laps is enough to sort of feel what this car can do, and I think Generally speaking, just like pre-facelift, this Polo GTI is really well equipped for someone who wants their first performance hot hatch because it does all of the normal stuff really well, but it's not as compromised as the Hyundai i20N that I'm running as a long-termer at the moment. It really is a car that can fit into your everyday life and you can still have a good amount of fun when you come out to a track like this and it's not gonna do anything weird on you, any sort of lift-off oversteer that you're not expecting. It's very polished and very consistent and quite enjoyable indeed. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in detail in a minute, but first let's talk about the powertrain of this car because actually it shares a lot of similarities with the Volkswagen Mark V Golf GTI, the GTI that was coined as a sort of return to form for the GTI brand name. It is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, about 35 kilos lighter than that Mark V GTI, but it uses the same um, 2 litre turbocharged engine, though of course in an evolved form that makes the same power, 147 kilowatts, and that's a really good amount of power for a car of this weight. The 0 to 100 kilometer an hour claim is 6.8 seconds, which is pretty rapid and we haven't had a chance to test it today owing to the inclement conditions and lots of hills around us, but it feels really like it would achieve that time with no problems. That is a bit slower than the Hyundai i20N, but the way this engine performs is not so much about that peak power number, it's really about the amount of torque and the broad spread of it across the rev band, because this is a 2 litre turbocharged engine, it's not a downsized 1.6 like in that i20 or a 1.6. 5 litre three cylinder as found in the Fiesta ST. So it has this inherent muscularity to it and it's uh, backed up by the engine note of this car, which is really quite fruity. I think it's a little fruitier than the current Golf GTI. Now, some of that is synthesized and piped in, but I kind of don't mind it. I don't really hate it as much as I do in the Skoda Octavia. It actually seems like a good balance of a sort of performance car that you can use every day, which is exactly what this car is because this engine and this six speed. DSG gearbox, this dual clutch transmission, feels so polished. Volkswagen has been very, very tirelessly honing this gearbox and engine combination over the years, and it's the only vehicle in this class currently on sale that offers this unique blend of a really punchy engine with a dual clutch gearbox. The other options are manual only, so if you want a hot hatch that's easy to live with every day, and trust me, I know living with a manual hot hatch is fun, yet not always easy, then this kind of, this is it. Um, of course, you can step up to the higher price bracket vehicles. Now, I will touch on that because at $40,550 for this car here, wearing King's Red paint, which is a $300 option, and also the Style and Vision package, this car is expensive. In fact, it's more money before on-road costs than the Hyundai i30 was when it launched back in 2018. But now that car's $5,000 more expensive, and ultimately it is a more track-focused, less livable everyday vehicle than this Polo GTI. And really what Volkswagen is going for with the inclusion of two-stage adaptive dampers in this vehicle is a car that is easy to live with every day, one that fits into your life beautifully, like a perfect shoe that you just put on when you go out. It's not the sexiest shoe in the world, but it just works, and you know, people sometimes give it a compliment when they see it, they're like, wow, that's a nice pair of shoes, it looks really comfortable. Now back to those two-stage adaptive dampers, because again, like the automatic gearbox, other vehicles in this size class simply don't offer that option. You've got comfort setting, which is so, so nice out on the road. It feels really well judged. In fact, against the other Polos that we've driven here today, it actually feels more comfortable than the smaller wheeled style grade. I think the dampers are obviously higher quality and the spring and damper package is just lovely on this vehicle. It sits beautifully flat. There's no hopping. There's no sort of jiggling that you'd normally expect from a short wheelbase car. I mean, yes, there is a little bit of jiggling, but ultimately it's, it's not bad at all. It feels feels like it's got that Audi character, a solidity and a heaviness to this car, like a heft that's really pleasant out on the road. And then when you tip it into a good set of corners out on the road, it really rewards. It's not as pointy or darty as rivals. It doesn't lift off oversteer like the Fiesta ST. So if you're a real driving enthusiast and you really want to explore the limits of grip and feel a front wheel drive car moving around underneath you, there are definitely options that are probably going to suit you a little bit better. 
but as someone who just likes a car that goes around the corner really crisply, really quickly, and with great conviction, then this thing's really fun. It does definitely lack a little bit of front end bite out here on the racetrack, but a lot of that comes down to tires as well. You can dial it into sport mode, but it feels like the Conti Sport Contact 5 tires equipped on this vehicle, wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels, do leave a little bit to be desired in terms of steering feedback and ultimate grip compared to some other tires you can get out there that have a more sporting focus. But again, they reward by being so confidence inspiring in the wet, so quiet. And that's the other thing about this vehicle. The noise vibration harshness insulation is probably, well, it's definitely best in class. And I think it's better than a lot of vehicles the size up, like a Hyundai i30 N-Line Turbo, I don't think is as quiet as this car out on the road. And that says a lot about the little Polo GTI and how mighty it is for such a little package. Coming on to safety as well, of course, we've got passive safety systems such as the fantastic handling, even with this torsion beam rear end, it is just really settled and crisp and easy to read what this car is going to do mid-corner. It doesn't do any weird lift off oversteer or anything untowards uh, when you get it into a bit of a sticky situation. And you've got all the safety aids you could expect, track control, ESP. You've also got front AB, blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control with stop and go function, lane keep assist that actually works really well. And yeah, on the whole, it just makes this package feel incredibly complete. Now, if you're a keen driver who really enjoys coming to the racetrack every weekend and is enthused about something like a track day warranty, then the Volkswagen Polo GTI isn't gonna be for you. However, this car's blend of everyday attributes, the way it holds itself up on track is seriously impressive. Combine that with a lovely interior, more safety than ever before, and the Polo GTI almost takes the cake as the Golf GTI. It's almost as spacious as the Golf was in Mark VI form inside. It's really well packaged, and it's fairly affordable when you compare it to its older brother. Of course, it's a lot more expensive than it was before, so let me know down below what you think of that because I think the extra additions for this facelift and the fact that cars are getting more expensive in general which is a shame kind of justifies the price increase but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below and while you're down there leaving a comment why not hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and as always thank you very much for watching Chasing Cars.